Now I know having a tough stainless steel camp knife is a must for many of us. Well, Joker Knives has taken everything that you and I love and trust in the Nomad design and then just enlarged it and brought it into the survival knife arena with the Nomad 6.5. That extra inch and a half of blade length over the original is going to give us more weight behind each swing, meaning it's going to bite in deeper to wood, making it a lot easier to process if you're building a shelter or some form of larger fire prep or other activities that compact camp knives just can't do. It's going to also give us more spanning capability to span larger logs to break down and baton with that 0.19 thick spine with the balance point being right there at the guard and with the convex edge means that it doesn't lose any of its finesse to be able to do those really fine curls to help you get a fire going or other really detailed cutting that you may expect a larger knife to kind of fall short in. I'm gonna show you with a simple field sharpener how I'm going to maintain but also fix a damaged edge on this original Nomad. I'm gonna put a burr on this beautiful edge. But there's also a few other attributes to the design that have been tweaked and modified as they have updated this sheath and I am very pleased with what I am seeing. But also dig in a little bit deeper to the idea of a survival knife. And what on earth is a survival knife anyway? So blade lovers, hang on, we got a wild ride today. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Aaron and this is Gideon's Tactical. Now I wanna kick things off by comparing it to the original Nomad because I know many of you have either been looking at it or already own one. But before we go any further in the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is Huckberry. Huckberry is much more than just another online retailer because they bring us the best new brands and gear at the best prices while sharing tips and ideas on how we can use that gear and equipment. And I want to hone in on one brand in particular, Flint and Tinder. The apparel they manufacture, like the American-made wax trucker jacket, takes its inspiration from the hardworking Americans it's built for. And I've had a blast seeing their claim of it wearing in and not out in action with flannel or wool lined options that give protection from the elements this jacket works hard and looks good doing it or the 10 year zip up or pullover hoodie also made in the usa out of beefy 23 ounce fleece from south carolina it has kept me warm working out here on those cold colorado days and is guaranteed to work as hard as you and i do for the next decade and there are tons of other apparel options that Flint and Tinder manufacture, like their 365 pants, which are super comfortable and have held up great to harder use that I've put them through. And so guys, I will have a link in the description box below over to the Huckberry website, as well as my exclusive promo code for 10% off your very first purchase. So I encourage you guys hop on over there and check out all that they have going on. Now you're gonna have the exact same handle dimensions as on the original, which if you're not familiar with is amazing it is a very good handle they're large and thick versus slim and narrow which is excellent gives you a lot to grip onto with larger hands they're contoured so there's no blockiness to them good little cut in for that guard there but then also a little bit of a bird beak that is fully covered by the micarta on the back end with an exposed pommel for hammering in and pinned in handle scales you can get micarta with liners that pop you can get wood handles there's lots of variants and versions that are out there and so what that's going to give you is that nice ability to choke up and work close to the edge when necessary back up a little bit and do that chopping if you need to then as you look down the blade you get that full exposed tang exact same thickness at that 0.19 so nice and thick and what you're also going to have is that convex edge but there are a few differences with the blade obviously the inch and a half longer blade than on the original you're gonna have a three ounce weight difference the original being about nine and a half ounces the 6.5 being about 12 and a half ounces and the balance point will be slightly different between the two the original being a little bit more handle heavy with the balance point actually being like right under that pin that first pin right there and then the balance point on the new 6.5 being really right at the guard so it's moved forward about half an inch in the balance point still excellently balanced but you can notice that it moves forward ever so slightly just because it's a longer slightly wider blade 
Now let's park here for a moment and not only discuss the Bowler manufactured N695 steel and its properties and capabilities and also limitations, especially on a bigger outdoor knife like this. Now, anything coming out of a Bowler factory I've always found to do exceptionally well. They have really good tolerances and you know the oversight for the manufacturing is really kept to high standards. I've used N690 and 95 on tons of different blades. They are very similar steels. N695 just being slightly better and basically is very similar to VG10 and is kind of a souped up 440C steel, which means that you can get yourself an uncoated blade like this and not really worry about rust. And if there is any rust that forms, it's very easy to remove and wipe off and it's not going to start to stain and pit like it would on a high carbon steel blade. And then you're gonna have a good toughness as well as middle of the road edge retention. And guys, I know your time is super valuable. So if you're enjoying this video, I do invite you to subscribe, hit that like button and make sure to hit the bell icon so you can be notified week in, week out when I break down gear and equipment, showing you what it can do, what it can't do and helping you decide whether or not it's right to throw in rotation and take on your outdoor adventures. Now, Joker has obviously been listening because they have updated this sheath and I am very pleased with what I am seeing. A box stitched back, but, uh, aspect to the belt loop. The original model has a button snap and I've found that those popped off a lot. I actually almost lost one of my nomads that I've had over the years uh, to that. You know, I like got to my spot and it had detached and it was almost like about to fall into the trail. And it just it wasn't really for me. I didn't really like it. So this is an excellent upgrade. They now offer this, at least on this model. I hope they do that across all the nomads. I think would be smart to do. So excellent to see that. Good stitching, double stitch all the way through. You got your drainage hole down there. Two lashing points if you did want to thigh lash it. Though I didn't really see a need for this size. But then another good attribute, so if I hold it upside down, it's going to fall if I do the jerk test hard enough. Is it? I thought it would. Oh my gosh. Okay, this is why. This is so cool. Okay, you know, not hard to pull out. There is a, hopefully you guys can see that in there. You might not. I might have to do like a secondary shot right now. There is a plastic insert that is like contoured. It's not just like, oh, it's just like folded some plastic in there. Like it's contoured and kind of sucks the blade in to hold it better and to make sure it's not you know cutting the sides and stuff so that i mean this sheath is an excellent sheath i am digging digging this sheath and they have done an excellent job with it other manufacturers that kind of like eh, leather sheaths then you take note this is excellent now the combination of that thick blade with a convex edge love that freaking convex Cracks open wood like it was nothing. La 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 la. It's just a dream to do all the woodwork. Now, on top of that, the only real drawback that I've seen would be probably food prep. It wouldn't be my first choice to make a full meal if I was chopping vegetables and meat and you know doing all these different things. Uh, there are a full flat grind is just better suited for that. And because of the kind of the thicker edge, the convex will do pretty good, you know, and you can get by, but it wouldn't be my first choice as a food prep knife at the campsite. And that tip is just like so like B17, you know, bomber, but it still pierces enough that I can get in there. It has plenty of lateral strength just because of how thick and kind of snub nose it is. And that huge amount of belly down there I can work with, do bowls, you know, cut out a spoon if I had to, things like that, just because of the way the blade is shaped. But then also that snub nose getting, stabbing enough when necessary, but um, give me a plenty of belly for the style of blade. But it's definitely not a piercing blade and I wouldn't use it in some sort of defensive role in a go bag. Now let's talk about the performance and maintenance of a convex edge that this knife has. You don't see it as often on blades as flat grinds. You tend to find convex edges more on axes. And there's a reason for that. Here is what a convex versus flat grind looks like. Convex edges, tend to have a little bit more mass on them and think of like the hull of a ship versus the flat side of a pyramid that we normally would get on any flat or saber ground blade, you know, that would be out there or a hollow grind that would be concaved. 
This means that there is a little bit more weight and mass behind the edge, giving you more impact strength. And that means that it will have better edge stability, hold, if you will, its edge a little bit longer than your standard flat grinds. The trade-off is you need a different technique to resharpen a convex edge than you do a basic flat grind, which can be intimidating for some people. Now, the simplest way just to maintain a convex edge is with a leather strop. This field sharpener from WorkSharp has just that. And if you were to maintain it by after every use, just doing some stropping, you would probably never need to do anything else to the blade. But what happens if you hit a rock, you hand it to a buddy and they drop it, something dumb happens and there does become some damage. How do you fix that damage? I've got a little nail here. This is like the last thing in the whole wide world I wanna do, but I'm gonna put a burr on this beautiful edge. So I've rolled it, you know, I can definitely feel it. All right, the sun is getting really harsh, so I'm gonna try to, there you go, you can, we can feel it. It's actually still performing pretty well. You can see about a little bit of that burring. And hopefully you guys are gonna be able to pick up on that right there. You can see where it's snagging, where I've damaged the edge. This alone is not going to take out now that damage that I've done, and I can't just start going on the stone itself. And so what I found is if I just kind of do a rocking motion backwards and forwards, kind of trying to let the knife, not like any pressure, I'm almost putting no pressure on this knife. And I've seen it done also, if you have uh, particular types of stones, you can kind of rock the stone back and forth, but you're basically trying to follow without creating a flat grind because you don't want to do that either by like pushing really hard. You could transition and make this into a flat grind and then you lose all the power that that convex edge has. And so what I'm doing is just kind of like letting the blade kind of rock itself down, rock itself up, rock itself down and rock itself up. And as I'm doing that, hopefully you guys are going to be able to pick that up on frame. I'm trying to do this all on frame for you guys, but basically sweeping up and then riding it down and sweeping it up and just kind of doing that motion, you can just kind of feel it. It's already starting to come out. I can already tell that it's starting to come out. It looks better. I don't know how well you guys can pick up on frame, but that burr, you can still see it a little bit there on frame. It's the light transition different on the edge. But I'm gonna work on this here for just a minute doing that and we'll test it out. I was here like three minutes maybe doing that. And I mean, that's pounding on that nail, definitely rolling that, which obviously would not be ideal. I've now done it on the stone. Now I'm just dropping it. It's about mirror polish there. I mean, beautiful. Super happy with that. There you go. Nice. So I, I hope you guys are going to be able to see this all on frame. I'm trying to do all this, you know, with lighting issues and stuff, but I mean, that's skin filleting sharp without much effort. And I was able to do it with a field sharpener. Uh, and I know there are guys that are way more proficient than me, way better than me at, you know, tuning up and maintaining convex edges. But a lot of videos I've seen are just of like mouse pads and sandpaper because of, you know, that wanting of contouring which is all true, but I mean, are you gonna pack all that in if you're hiking or camping, you know? I mean, not necessarily. So what do you do when you're out there and you damage it when you're hiking and camping? You know, that with a simple field kit, as long as you have that technique down, it's not difficult. I would recommend having a leather strop of some kind with that sharpening kit, just to kind of help tune that edge. And if, you know, maybe this is the very first convex knife you're considering, maybe it'd be smart to get a really budget, you know, ax or something to really learn how to do that well before you mar up or do something that you regret with this blade to just get proficient with it. And there's also the way of using um, a belt sharpener and just getting some slack in that belt. And you can do, you know, powered belt sharpeners that way as well to maintain and put convex edges. You can do it on all your knives. You can transition all your knives to that. I know many people do. Um, as well. So just wanted to kind of walk us through that whole process and maintaining and fixing damaged convex edges. Now let's talk about survival knife. What does that really mean? And what's that concept even look like? And for everyone is different. Many people would say it's whatever knife you have on you in a survival situation. And so there's definitely some truth to that. Yeah, it's got a lot of flex. Nice. Yeah. 
And for me, in a perfect world, I would have, say, about a five inch pretty compact knife like the original Nomad, a compact hatchet, and a good folding saw. All this is gonna take up quite a bit of space in a pack and weigh about four pounds. So to me, a midweight survival knife is a blade that is sized that in a pinch, it could process split wood similarly to a compact hatchet, be able to handle about the same diameter and be able to delim or fall similar sized trees. Now, of course, it's gonna take more energy with a knife than a saw or an ax would, but it's really, is it set up to handle swinging and impact and be able to span wide enough logs that say that hatchet could split in half as well? And could it do that if it had to in a pinch. Of course, each individual tool will do better and I'm gonna compromise maybe some carving capability because it's slightly larger and more cumbersome than that more compact blade. So there are trade-offs, but that's the idea for me of a mid-weight survival knife is could you, if necessary, just take this one item, you're not planning on building a fire or a shelter, but if you had to, you could bust this out and get the task done using more energy, using more time, but be able to accomplish similar tasks to all three of those items individually could do quicker and more efficiently. And so for me, the Nomad 6.5 would definitely fall into that category. Now let's talk value and competitive options. Now when I'm making this video, I'm not aware of any US distributors that are currently carrying the 6.5 because it's so new. And so I do appreciate Joker sending me a sample over so I can test it out, use it, show you guys what its capabilities are, if there are any limitations to help you better determine if it's the right tool for you. As soon as it does become available, I'll have links in the description below, not only for this model, but I'll also currently have links for the other competitive options. Now the original Nomad uh, is going right now on Amazon for about 120 to 130, depending on handle material and whether or not you get it with a fire steel. So based off of what I'm seeing, some of your European distributors charging in euros and based off of this, I'm gonna say it's gonna probably be right around like 150 to 160 on average for the larger model. And so for some competitive options, uh, I recently did the RAT 6 with S35VN steel made in America, about 165. S35VN will definitely hold its edge better than uh, N695. The difference is that you actually get more blade length and you don't get a choil. So those of you who don't like choils on your knives, the Nomad obviously, and then the handle ergonomics are much better, just a lot more rounded, contoured, and feel more comfortable on the Nomad than on the Rat. The Rat is very blocky um, and clunky. And then you're gonna get that nice sheath on the Nomad and then kind of a basic nylon that absolutely gets the job done, but it's pretty basic on the Ontario. And then since I don't have too many convex blades, I have here the S1 from Falkneven. Excellent blade, very different knife, a lot lighter. The handle is much narrower, uh, slimmer. You know, it's not an exposed tang, even though it is a full tang. Uh, but that has a convex edge on VG10 steel, which as I've discussed earlier, you're gonna get very similar edge retention performance out of these two blades. And so guys, it is really exciting to see a mid-weight survival knife with some of these unique attributes being stainless steel, giving us a convex edge that a lot of times you're gonna have to spend a lot more money to get a convex edge on a blade of this size. So there's a value aspect just to that. And then all the other little tweaks and fine tuning that they have done now gives us the ability, if you still need just a compact, you know, heavy duty blade, you got the original and now you can absolutely compete with many other midweight survival knives, but you can get it with a stainless steel. So I look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts on what do you think about the Nomad 6.5. And I appreciate you guys so much for coming over today. Check out the other video popping up. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.